Uh, hey guys, my name is Kendrick and welcome to ENFP Mail. So today I'm doing a video, doing a conversation with fellow op member uh, Andreas right here. He is an INTP and we're just going to sh shoot the shit and um, I'm going to try to figure out how he, each of his functions work from his perspective and how he, it affects his daily life. So hey Andreas, nice to meet you dude. <laughs> nice to meet you too. So yeah, man, like I said, I've, I've been to your country in, in uh, Denmark. I went to Svenborg. I went to the, is said the gorilla park where you like, it's like a treetop adventure. I don't oh, know. We, we have a lot of, we have a lot of them around Denmark, but we don't, I, I don't know that exact place, but, but yeah. Yeah. That, that's a cool thing we have here in Denmark. Yeah. So uh, if, if you can, can you just introduce, you know, what kind of uh, Myers-Briggs personality type you are and then go into detail with also your animals and, and uh, if you're a jumper, if you're standard, you know, so let's, let's start with that. Yes. Um, my, my normal, you know, the function flow is just like a basic uh, INTP. So I have TI at the top, I have FE at the bottom. So, you know, biggest struggle, FE, um, biggest savior, TI. Uh, so I'm an intimate thinker. Um, but I'm a little bit different than the other INTPs. I'm a little more, I'm not as much extroverted because I'm sleep first. So I'm TI, SI. Uh, so I'm jumping over that, uh, that NE. So I'm more, you know, into the what is actually reality, was it, what is factual, and I want to control things. I want to go over my known information. I don't want to gather some, a bunch of new stuff. I can do that. I'm pretty good at it, and it's not really where my, my big swings, my big problems comes in life, uh, to be honest. But when, when the time comes, when I'm really extremely stressed, it will go down to SI. I'm not so much any... Um, but, but yeah, basically, so I will go over that and uh, then it will create sleep. So uh, my, whole, my whole life is like, you know, sleep, trying to preserve energy, trying to think things through and like, you know, yeah, I guess just think. Um, the next animal I have is like my SI will uh, then point to uh, FE. So that's, this is where it gets a little bit weird because um, I use a lot of my FE uh, more than the other INTPs. Like Bill Gates, he's uh, he's uh, consumes sleep, so he's double activated on the TI, so he's really you know into TI, and it's also a masculine TI, so he's a little more you know introverted, a little more like it's hard with the tribe where I'm a little more. I have I have an advantage there. I I can play with the tribe a little more, and I understand them a little bit better. I think at least, um, and then I go over play as my hobby function, so you know that's. I'm a energy dominant um, type, so so yeah. And then the last animal is consume, and I'm double masculine, so I got that that M and M vibe of me, like you know that when that that FE is going to to hit, it's going to hit real hard. Um, but but yeah, basically that is just a short version of I think of my type. I'm a little special in that there's not a lot of my exact type. Um, I only know of one official. There are two, but the other one is not really official yet. Uh, he's hard to type. You can't really confirm him because he has not really any YouTube videos out there where he's talking. He's just building stuff. So, but yeah. yeah. Man, all, all you have to do is dye your hair blonde now and you'll look like Eminem for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have been told that before. Everybody's yeah. like, you and ISTP, you look exactly like Eminem. And I'm like, wait, what? I can see it. I can see it. It's there. Yeah. No, no, no. So, um, so basically you're sleep first and then you have blast second and then you have play third and then you have consume last. So you're quite an extroverted INTP. So, yes. and also you don't use your extroverted intuition that much, which is weird because a lot of INTPs do abuse that consume function. And you're like the weird one that like prefers, yeah. prefers to blast instead. Now, because you do blast, you do get a lot of things done. Would you say that? That is true. Like, I think from a really early age, I was ready to, to already make a movie. I, I started going out and making movies and trying to make books and trying to do a lot of crazy, stupid shit when I was like, I think five or something, like too young, too young. I didn't study anything. I was just like, okay, let's go out. Let's make a movie. I don't care. I can do anything. I, I, I don't care. So, um, so you're big into uh, making videos then? Yeah, films, short, short films. Not so much uh, YouTube. Uh, way back before when I was yo younger, I uh, I used to, I used to make YouTube videos, but they're all gone now. But um, but yeah, I make short films, um, and I'm that is my big passion. It's definitely short films or 
in general, just films. Also rap music, but mostly, mostly films. <laughs> You're the weird uh, INTP who is into rap music too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so weird. Like I relate to like people like Elon Musk and Sam Harris, but like I'm, I'm, I'm way too masculine. I'm way too, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's weird, but. Uh, so if you're into rap and all that stuff, then you know, like uh, I don't know if you've seen Dave's class with when he talks about you know what is your, um, what what you like, what what kind of what your interest is. So there's you know he talks about like, do you talk about uh, you know nerdy anti stuff or woo woo nf stuff or like mm. popularity sf so it sounds like you like a lot of sf actually because like if you like you know eminem and you like rap music and if you're into like you know short films that sounds like a lot of like you know sensory <laughs> sensory and you know feeling kind of like combination yeah the the thing is like st is like that is my favorite thing i love going to that but i have a love hate relationship between like class uh, play and consume like the NT nerdy stuff, the NF hippie hippie sc- stuff, and the SF. I have like you know I, I love them a lot, and then I'm just hating them. And it's like I think a lot of my big swings are in there because NF is still my biggest struggle. So things like NF and things like um, is if like popularity is pretty hard for me. Like I was the least popular uh, kid when I was younger and going to school and all that. But still, I have an understanding of, you know, we need to make this popular. We need to make uh, people like this. It's really important. Like, you know, you can see it with, uh, with uh, the, oh, I don't remember his name. The, the guy who's always with uh, Bill Nye, the black guy, the double masculine. Uh, Bill Nye, the science guy or something? Not him, but his friend, the black guy. The oh, oh I, I think I saw his video on Dave's class. It's Neil deGrasse or something? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, he's a little more, you know, also have that understanding that, like, we need to, to make this popular. We need to make people like this. So you think I have that in me, but I don't like it. Like, you don't like your saviors, but I really like, you know, it's like a big string, like, boom, NT, boom, SF, and there's no really balance in that at all. So, so you're not, it, it's your weakest function, which is, you know, your extroverted feeling, but mm. you respect it. You know it's important for the tribe to like whatever it is you're working on. Otherwise, there's no point. You're not going to be as effective as you could be if you don't. So, so even though you hate it and you, you're not very good at it, you know it's important. And so you work at it. Exactly. It's like, you know, you have this, you have this big car and then you have this little car. And, you know, you know this car is really important because you're going on a long trip and all these other cars, they may be big and nice, but they can't really last that long. But that little car can rest really long but it's small so you can really use it for anything so it's hard you know so you have to kind of build it up make it stronger and you know i think once i have built my if if he up i think that i can i think i think i will be a pretty yeah i think i will have some advantage in life that other people don't have because of that so what are you doing right now to practice using your fe can you be can you provide some specifics uh, basically, I do uh, two things. When I was younger, uh, even before this, I, I started to realize, like, shit, I'm not really that popular. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I don't know why. What the fuck's going on? Yeah. Um, so the the one thing I began to, to do was like, okay, fuck myself, really. Fuck what I like. Fuck what I think. Fuck what I think is right or wrong. Let me let me go out and do like Jesus and wash some other people's uh, foot. Let me go out and like, okay, help people uh, if they have relationship problems. Yes, I'm lonely. I don't have a girlfriend, but let me help you. Let me try to help you. And I saw uh, as I began, you know, to help people, like really make them happy. Try to, to as much as you can, just focus on them, you know, an EJ and, and forget about your TI, forget about what you, your reasons and forget about yourself. Just try to get out there and wash other people's <laughs> foot. You, I actually saw, I, I kind of built up this tribe for me. So when I was, you know, going out there, I couldn't, I, I wasn't alone. I, I, I saw the good thing in that, that I wasn't alone. So I have that tribe behind me. And that was the first thing I do uh, now to like make it even stronger and maintain that thing. Because now I actually have a tribe behind me. I have a lot of friends uh, around like the, the Denmark and the world and all that. So I was just maintaining that tribe. And that is pretty damn hard like 
damn, it's hard to maintain. <laughs> because, you know, there's always drama. There's always someone going on that will make people fight each other or, or whatever. But but uh, but the thing I'm trying to do at least is like I'm 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 trying to to use my F E and T I to say okay, this is is the logical thing. Forget about what the fuck you're feeling. Fuck your feelings. Let's see what is logical here. Let's see what makes sense and let's go on that. But still, kind of you know, hey, if you want a hug, you want anything? Let, let me be there for you. Let me let me make a sandwich for you. Let me make what, whatever you need. But still, you know, kind of keeping that balance. Uh, but still, a thing like. I'm, I'm training and I'm trying to, to figure out how the fuck to maintain that if because that is hard. It was also hard to get that if you try, but it's goddamn hard also to, uh, to maintain it. At them. And yeah, that, that is a struggle. I'm still, I'm 18 years old. I'm a young kid. So, you know, I got a lot to learn and I'm ready for it. So I'm not afraid for that. You know, it will come. It will come. I just need practice. And that is basically all. So. So you know, you know the, the good thing here, man, is that the fact that you're only 18, you're working at this, you're going to have the advantage over, you know, all the other INTP out there just because a lot of them, they probably don't know about, you know, Myers-Briggs or, you know, OP. And um, I think the other advantage that you have is the fact that you have feminine introverted thinking. So you're not so set in your identity. And because you have that masculine FE, then you're more likely to respect that, you know, the tribe stuff. So it, it, even though it's already your weakest, just because you respect it and just because you're not, you don't associate yourself with your identity so hard, like mm. if you were someone that has that masculine introverted thinking, you definitely had that strategic advantage over the other INTP. So that's, that's definitely going to give you um, a big advantage moving forward. Now, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I want I to add on this. So but yeah? um, I just wanted to add on to, the, to this is that um, have you ever had a huge tribe tidal wave before and what was that like you know because even though you're <laughs> even though you're you know even though you have feminine introvert thinking and you know you understand extrovert feeling and you practice it it's mm. still your worst function so you must have had some really bad tribe tidal waves so can you like tell tell us how that was like and you know <laughs> basically like my my whole life from day one to like i think i was uh, 16 years old was one big iffy uh, tidal wave, like one big tidal wave. Two years tidal wave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And because of that, that slowly began to start another tidal wave um, when I was like around uh, 17 or what. But that was a smaller one. And I was like, okay, I, I have tried a lot of shit back then. I know I can go through this. I know I can, I can do this. Uh, but basically, like what it felt like, what, what really happened was like, you know, I, I grew up, least popular you know if he is hard for me so i got bullied a lot um a lot of people didn't really like me there was people that liked me but it was hard to maintain them because there was other people who can play football i couldn't so you know there was a lot of things i couldn't the other kids could and i wasn't even good at school because i was too focused on on sleeping you know i'm, I'm being my thought and creating my own little fantasy world i guess to escape all the bullying because a lot of the other kids really uh, didn't like me and um and that was you know just one big tidal way of that where i got bullied i had a parent problem i had family problems and you know it felt it felt painful it felt painful i can pretty much see how you know the the observers the life is all about fear i can see like fuck fear i'm not really afraid of anything i don't really have that like yeah i can be afraid i can understand your fear it's not that i'm, I'm just not that fearful but the pain, I can really see the pain is one thing that sticks out because I could, yeah, I just remember it. It's a long time now, um, but I remember it as, you know, every day was just a struggle. Like, I know I have classed. I know what, right now I'm talking pretty good and right now I'm talking. But back then I was just a little silent kid who didn't say anything. I was silent. I was like really, really introverted. I know I'm a more like extroverted person. You can even see it how I'm moving my body. But back then, because I had no friends, I had no, you know, relative or anything like I could talk to. So I was, it was like every day I didn't say a word. I was just all in my mind, all in my mind. I also think that is the, the reason why I'm so good at consume because I naturally just started off. Okay, I have no friends. I can't blast. I can't play. What can I do? Sleep and consume. Well, okay, then I'm going to do that. Um, but, but yeah. I don't want to go too much in detail because that was a lot of shit and, you know, a lot of 
uh, bad things happening. I it, it got real physical to a point where it was like people beating each other and weapons were drawn. And you know, I'm also from from a ghetto here in Denmark, uh, so that's also been shootings uh, and all that. I have never shot anybody or anything like that. I'm a, I'm a good person in that, but <laughs> but you know, seen some shit, I guess, and that really builds up to that FE. Uh, and that was the reason later on when I have the other title with the small one, like I have just built so much iffy that I just have repressed, you know, fuck the feelings, go away with them. Um, and they're just, you know, build up. So when I start slowly to, to get some friends and to get some positive thing in my life, like things were moving in a good direction. I started, you know, to like, oh shit, I, I have some feelings in here. I haven't, I haven't really worked on, I haven't really, you know, I have repressed them a lot. And that just caused a big where I was like, admittedly, I, I was I was like a baby with that iffy. I was just angry and oh, and got to burn some stuff, got to make like Elon Musk, funny enough, make a flamethrower or make some bombs, explode some things, destroy something, get the anger out because I was so angry from, from the past. Um, but I luckily have some good friends that was really, you know, patient and they... They, they they did a good job with that, I think. I'm really happy that they were there. But, uh, and yeah, after that, I, I kind of got to, you know, to relax and I also got to know what this system was. And I was like, oh, it's makes, it makes sense now why I acted the way I did because it was just a lot of feelings repressed and, you know, moved down to a deep, deep down place in me that I haven't visited um, in, a, in a lot of years. So, I think, I think that, yeah. Well, dude, thanks for sharing uh, those painful experiences that you experienced when you were younger. Um, you know, e even though they were not positive in any way, I think the fact that, you know, you experience them at a younger age, I think as you get older, you're going to be able to cope better with, you know, the realities of life just because, you know, life's not about like rainbows and sunshine, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. the, the earlier you experience all this, you know, bad shit that happens to you, you know, it's only going to get better from there, right? Because especially if you already hit rock bottom, you know, like you said, you struggled with making friends, um, you know, when you were an early teenager. And uh, now that you have friends, you can finally use, you know, your blast and your play. But um, before, you know, as you said, consume was your weakest function. And because it was your weakest function, you know, you uh, on a regular INTP who didn't have the struggles that you did, there was no freaking way that you would have had the chance to practice your weakest function. So the fact that, you know, you went through those struggles, you got a chance to use your fourth function demon. Now you have access to it and you know how to use it. And you're not like an idiot who, who doesn't know how to use it. Now mm -hmm. I, I do want to add on to this question, like just based on the stuff that you were talking about, you were talking about the, the feelings that you had and you keep saying, fuck the feelings and you're pushing it down. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that you're, you know, two years older from, you know, all these tidal waves that you were experiencing with a tribe, are you more comfortable now with expressing how you feel? Are you more in touch with it now, or is it something that you still repress? You know, um, it's like you know, I can see the feelings now. Uh, you know, you know, the, Carl Jung talked about you know the the oh, the shadow. Uh, I can't remember exactly shadow, what shadow functions or yeah, exactly. You know, the repressed shadow and the ego, or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, the deep down demon you have inside. Like I can now see. Oh shit! This is the dark room of my mind. This is how you know. It's it's. It is, so I can see the feelings. But honestly, um, I, I have a really big struggle with like communicating feelings. I, it's funny, even though I have blast, I'm, every time people uh, want me to, 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 to talk about feelings, I'm like, eh, can we talk about yours instead? Because that is more okay, but my mind, no, let's not go there at all. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to let it out because I'm afraid of them. I'm afraid of what other people will feel about them uh i will all, i'm also afraid of you know are they are they appropriate uh are they all right well can i control them will they will they create a big chaos um so no i can't really the thing is with with rap music and with movies i have really learned to um, to use my feelings so when i'm feeling down i can just you know fuck this idiot and go out and be really aggressive in that song or um, or I can, you know, kind of escape into my own world. I had this, I'm still building on it a little bit, but this big fantasy world because I'm a big history nerd. I love history. I love philosophy. I love religion and, and all those kind of things. Not, not so much I'm a religious person, but just, you know, the mythology of it. 
Um, so, you know, taking that and, you know, playing with ideas inside my mind and creating them and setting up and building this fantasy world of mine and escaped in that. And that had also helped me a lot, but I'm, I still, I still can't express feelings at all. It's nearly impossible. I can't through music. I can't through uh, films, but through like physical talk and uh, physical saying to my friends, like, Hey, I'm sad. Help me. I can't say that. It's impossible. It will be like that. That one time, uh, like that will be many, many, many years, and then I will say it one time, and then it will be many, many years again where I'm just this cool bitch who doesn't really yes. share that lot of emotions. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know what? I don't think like talking about your feelings is a blast function. I think it's more of a play function because blast is more like you're teaching someone, right? Like a concept or mm. an idea. So you're coming from like a teacher perspective, like you're like the authority, and you're talking to someone that's your student, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when you're using play energy, it, it's more like you are sharing. So sometimes when you talk about your feelings, you're sharing how you feel. Now, you can't just share your feelings to, to, with everybody. I think that's like one of the things that you're scared of. Like, it's like one of the things that I, I hear from you is that you kind of have trouble identifying when is it okay to share it and when is it not okay to share it, you know? Because then you don't know how people are going to you know, react to it, you know? Is people are going to think, is this appropriate? Or is this person just being like, you know, a little bitch? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... Um, I, there's a, I, don't, I know you don't like to use consume, but there's like a, an author in the US, her name is Brene Brown, and she talks about uh, vulnerability, which is- I, I know her, I know her. Yeah, okay, cool, dude. I've never read her book, but I, I know her. I have watched her video. She was in the class, actually, so. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, if you watch like her TED Talk, let's say, um, but like, if, if you don't like to read, you can also just listen to her podcast, uh, not podcast. She has like some audio books that you can get online. But anyway, so she basically talks about like, when is it okay to like share your feelings and when is it not? And like, she talks about a concept where you like, you grab a piece of paper and you write down like the five people that is the most important to you. Like they, they, they re you respect them and they respect you. And you know this for a fact that you, there's this mutual respect and they will never betray your trust. And those five people are the only ones that you would essentially share your feelings with because those people earn that, you know, that trust, you know, like, you know, that mm -hmm. if you share your feelings with them, they're not gonna like stab you in the back. We're like, haha, you know, fuck you. You're a fucking moron, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. like they're going to talk, talk it out with you. And then actually it's going to help you develop more. The, the good thing about you is that you have the self-awareness. Like, you know, this is a weakness, right? You know, mm. you know, which mountain that you have to climb. Most people don't even know which mountain they need to climb. Right. The fact that, you know, so even though you only use that extra feeling every, you know, freaking like once a year or whatever, you know, cause he told me there's like a big gap between, you know, every time you use it, you're still mm. using it, man. And you know, like Dave always talks about like, everything's like a rep, right? Like, can you do if you can you, you can't do it for one hour, but can you do it for five minutes? If not, can you do it for one minute? Well, you know, if, if you just do like, you know, one minute of sharing your feelings, you know, once a week or something, man, you know, how good would you be at that extra feeling one year from now? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I have also thought about that because, you know, and, and that's also the reason why I'm not I'm not really panicking about it. I'm I'm really like relaxed about it. I'm I'm not really afraid because I know I'm working on it and, and I'm trying my best and you know, it won't be perfect right now. It won't be perfect in a month or a year, but it will get there if I just, you know, stay calm and do my thing and it will come, it will come. So and I'm really glad I met Dave and Shane, Shane because that teaches me like, you know, you, you just need to relax. It will come. If you work on it, it will come. Not now, not, not in next year, but it will come. Uh, and that is something I have taken in. So uh, to, to follow up to you, the next questions, you, we've been talking about extrovert feeling a lot. Let's talk about your other demon. Now it's not as bad as your extrovert feeling, but it's still a demon. So let's talk about your extrovert intuition. Oh yeah, fine. Have you ever had any, you know, maybe not as big of a tidal wave as FE, but have you had a tidal wave when it comes to chaos? Yeah, like I will, aura, uh, prepare for things and because I will over prepare so much I will build a tower so high it will basically you know it will fall uh, so yeah I, I have tried that honestly I don't really care that much when the system breaks down and again I can see that, well you know I'm, I don't really care about control chaos it's like uh, okay yeah, the system <laughs> Exactly. The system is falling apart. You know, it's, it's natural. It will die eventually. I don't really care. I can build a new one. I can go search for something, new. whatever. Yeah. It will be okay. Uh, and I have always have that mentality. My mom hates it. She's an RJ. I, I'm 100% sure she's an RJ and she just hate that mentality. I'm like, 
whatever you can control chaos chaos will always come after you you're too, so you're too relaxed about it i think from her perspective yeah yeah exactly but but the thing is like i don't really feel like the chaos part of it really like when the chaos hits it's often more like the people it's the people um, getting upset and hating me or oh that's getting something wrong with the people so it's more in there but the thing is within you where i can see it is a demon is like um having that under deep deep understanding of things because i can really see like okay i can understand the facts and i can understand it deeply but i can't do it like pretty fast i have to like sleep on them like you know really i gotta consume before i can get that really deep knowledge of it Uh, so I have to fight a little more to um, to get that understanding of, of things deep. And I can also see in that, you know, I'm afraid to just make a theory out of the blue and make a guess when people are like, oh, guess what? I'm like, oh, I don't want to guess. Just give me the freaking facts, please. Yes. So, <laughs> okay. But that, that's cool, man. It's really interesting because, uh, you know, you don't live in the ideal land. I mean, you understand it, but it's you prefer the, the facts that you've already organized. Mm. Um, yeah, man, that's, that's really interesting. So, so basically from what I hear from you is that the only time you have problem with chaos, it's like an after effect from the, tr the tribe hate that you've gotten, you know, yeah, basically. otherwise there's really no chaos. And if there is, you're not really struggling with it as much. Now, not as much. Like I can see it in the here now where I'm like, Oh, this is stressful right now. Oh, this is a little annoying. But after like, I think two minutes, Not even more. I'm like, oh, whatever. I can figure this out. Oh, this is how it works. Oh, whatever. I'm gonna do this. Like, I can figure it out pretty fast. It's not really. It's not really that hard. Honestly. Now, let me add on to the, to the stuff that you were mentioning earlier about pain and, uh, mm -hmm. and fear. So you said fear is not a big problem. Does that mean you're not really scared of a lot of things? Like you, you can act on something and you know you feel okay with it. Like besides your feelings, obviously that's because that's obviously gonna be your weak point, right? Like, yeah, like, f no, fear have never been a problem. It's funny because my, again, if you can take my mother as an example, yeah, totally IP thing to do. But, um, but he, she will, she is really fearful. She's really fearful for like, oh shit, uh, the fire, that can come a fire around or someone can come and rob us inside the house or whatever. Where I'm like, is that really, really realistic? Let's, let's go out and check if how, like, how many times in this neighborhood uh, people got robbed. And, If we are getting robbed, like we can figure this out. Like, if they're going to steal our TV, yeah, that sucks. But we can always figure out to get some money in and, and buy a new one, or live, or, or watch TV from our computers or our mobile. Like, we can figure out something new. We can look at it from another perspective. Um, I'm not really fearful. Also, in that I don't <laughs> naturally fear death. I don't naturally fear the dark or anything like that. I can see other people like um, IJs and also sometimes EPs being like, oh shit, I'm so afraid of the future. What if this is going to happen? Or what if everything is going to fall apart? Or what if chaos is going to hit me? Or what if I'm going to get trapped? Or whatever it can be. I'm like, yeah, I can, I can see where you're coming from. I can understand that because sometimes I feel that little bit in me. But then again, I'm just like, but it ain't that realistic or if it is, I can move around it. I can figure out a way to move around it. And when it hits, I can see like, I can actually move around it. I can actually do something about it. So it ain't really that. I don't know if that was a good answer. But no, <laughs> no, 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 it is because for me, I'm very fascinated with, 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 with this at all, uh, with the stuff you're saying, because uh, I'm an ENFP, right? So I'm a double mm -hmm. decider. I don't have problem with people. Like, you know, even though I get tribe hate, like, um, I think it was yesterday or the day before I made a post yeah on the Facebook group and people were like shitting on me right and you know it wasn't just that there I, I put it on different like platforms like I put it on reddit and I put it on um, personality cafe uh, personality ca uh, cafe mm -hmm. and, you know, all this INFJs went and uh, went on a massive attack on me they kind of like went on this like big gang to attack me right Yeah, I, I saw I, that video you made with with the uh, why the ENFP ENTP will win eventually over the INFJ and the yeah. INFJ. It was something like that. I saw the title and the first thing I thought was like, "Oh shit, there's going to be some hate there because all of the people that think they are INFJs and INTJs or whatever, they are gonna get mad." But but whatever. They are, and and you know what? Like, you know, I have sleep last, right? So I don't really think things through. 
So by the time I hit the publish button on YouTube, I was like, mm. oh, fuck, what did I do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know? man. You know, and then, uh, like, I actually had anxiety when, like, I was, when, I, when I was going to bed that night because I was like, shit, like, what did I yeah, do? I just did something stupid, did I? Fuck. No, because, like, you know, because I have sleep last, last, right? So I don't really, like, think things through. Like, I just act. Mm-hmm. And then, then after I act, I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. I, I, like, because that, that's when I process it after I act, right? Because yeah. my, my, my animals is consume first. Which is your opposite, actually. Actually, I think we have the exact opposite of, um, animals. We have, yeah. If you miss sleep, if you uh, consume play, blast sleep, yes, then we yeah, are opposite. Consume play, we have different blast. functions, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude, man, we're the complete opposite when it comes to animals. So, um, so basically, like you know, I, I saw that coming. But even though, like, I was getting all this tribe hate, like when it actually happened, and I was looking at it, it it didn't really bother me that much. Like, like, like I recovered from it really quickly. Like after it happened and, and I kind of the smoke blew over, I was like, okay, you know, I was like, like I was fine with it, but mm. definitely man, like fear is a big problem with me. And I was observing kind of like my friends, you know, like I, I have a friend who's an IP, like an INFP and mm. I have another friend who's an ENFJ. So they're both, you know, they're different because one is tribe above self and one is extremely self above tribe. No, no, no. Um, and I, I was, I was talking to my friend who is an ENFJ and he's really good in sales, right? And I'm like, you're not scared to approach people and like get them to buy the stuff they're selling. And you know, and like, you're not asked to ask for like ridiculous amount of money to, to buy the stuff that you're selling. He's like, nope, that fear has never came up to me. It's like, oh my God, I don't understand that. Like how, how what do you mean you never felt that fear? And then um, I have another friend that I met because I, I like traveling. So I, I go backpacking a lot. Mm. Um, so when I was in Africa, I met this IP, he's an INFP. And man, he goes to the most dangerous countries in Africa. Like he's like, he, he went to Somal- Somalia. He went to freaking like, uh, you know, Central African Republic, Democratic Republic of Congo, you know, all those places where people get thrown in jail for absolutely no reason other than you gave the police like the wrong look. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and he, he's not, there's no protection at all. Like he's completely exposed and he's going from country to country, you know, just on local transportation. You know, I, I don't know if you know this, but Johannesburg in South Africa is one of the most dangerous cities in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> he takes local transportation there. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what the fuck? Like, like how, like, are you not scared? You know? No, he wasn't scared at all. Like there was zero fear. And to me that like baffled me. Like, how, like, how can you not be scared? Like, you know, there's a lot of bad things that can happen, you know, like you, you can, yeah. see, you know, so like, can you, can you explain that? Like, like, would you not be scared of asking someone to buy something that you're selling? Or would you not be scared to go to a place that's more sketchy? Cause like, you know, like you already live in a ghetto, right? But like, imagine like it's 10 times more ghetto than where you, where you live. You know, like oh you're... yeah, yeah, it's it's much worse. Like it's it's bad here, but it ain't nothing like that. Yeah, you compare to that. Um, yes, the thing about fear and wood trap. Like yeah, I'm afraid to ask people for help. Like I'm, I want to solve it myself. That's because of TI. I'm really aware of that. But I want to solve it myself. It has to be me figuring the things out. If other people try to help me or anything like that, or if I'm stuck at anything, I don't want to ask anybody. I just want to myself figured out so i'm a little bit afraid to you know go out and say i, I couldn't please try to help me w- would you that that i'm pretty afraid of my my fear comes like i'm fearful but not of the chaos not of con- control not of you know going to dangerous places um i'm just fearful for for people hating me to be honest people not liking me um not liking the product i'm serving to them in a sense but you know going to dangerous countries or dangerous places or I have never taken drugs in my life but you know having that mentality of like let's just take an, a lot of drugs and eat a lot of mushrooms and go out in the forest and have a wild party that could be fun whatever like I have that mentality uh, that I, I'm just like yeah whatever let's just go out and do some crazy stupid shit let's jump out from a plane and I don't give a fuck a- attitude why? I can have that attitude. Why? why are you so afraid of the tribe hating on you? I, I, honestly, the only reason I can give is the function because I'm a TI, I'm an INTP, and you know, if I at last, that's the only thing I can give you. I don't, I don't have, that's the thing I hate most about it. It's, it's not logical. It's it not, ma- it's not. No sense at all. Exactly. I, so, you know, I'm trying to fight against it because it makes no fucking sense at all. But, it's still fearful. 
it's still like a really fearful thing. So it's just, you know, a fun inside of my like, you can't be afraid of that or you can't be sad because that is not logical, whatever. So it's, yeah. No, it, 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 it like, it, it puzzles me because um, one of my best friends is an INTP. And uh, mm-hmm. so he, he, he's originally from Hong Kong. And uh, recently here in Canada, where I live, the C, the, I think the CEO or COO of uh, Huawei, I don't know if you know the big phone company, Huawei. It's, Not really. <laughs> it's a Chinese, it's a Chinese uh, company. It's the biggest private um, Telephone company? It's a tel- yeah, it's a cell phone. It's a mobile phone called Huawei. H-U-A-W-E-I. Anyways, the CEO of that company got ex- uh, was arrested in the airport in Canada from the request <laughs> of the United States. And the reason why she was arrested was because Iran, the U.S. put a sanction on Iran, right? So people were not allowed to sell to Iran. But Huawei oh. was selling, you know, mobile phones and technologies uh, to Iran under the table, kind of like secretly. And the U.S. found out that, you know, this company was doing this. And they also found out that Huawei was, you know, probably stealing information from the United States. Now, obviously, uh, this lady is avoiding going to the U.S., but because Canada and U.S. have a really close relationship, when the U.S. requested for her to be captured in the airport, you know, Canada complied. And now China retaliated by arresting Canadian diplomats and entrepreneurs <laughs> in China in, in retaliation for, you know, Canada arresting their big CEO for this big, you know, mobile, mobile company. So um, now a lot of Canadians are scared to go to, to China now, you know, either, either for vacation or even just like a connecting flight, uh, mm-hmm. just because they think, you know, the Chinese government is going to arrest them and gonna capture them, right? And, yeah, and, yeah. and then when they captured those, um, those Canadians, they also tortured them, right? They, it, it, not, in, not in a very crazy way of torturing, but the way they tortured them was that they put them in a cell and they never closed the lights, so they couldn't get any sleep. The lights oh. was full blast, you know. Like imagine for, for you, you know, you have sleep first. That, how, how big of a nightmare that is where you have the lights on, you know, forever and you can't. The, the funny thing is I can sleep in anywhere all day, all way. Uh, that's okay. no oh. problem in sleeping at all. I can sleep in a train when the sun is up I, all day. All okay, time. well, that, that, that's an awesome ability. So, but anyways, like the, the point I was trying to make here is that my friend who's an IP, mm-hmm. he's oh, I understand, I understand. so fucking freaked out of, you know, because he needs to go to Hong Kong to visit some relatives, right? And mm. he's so freaking freaked out of, you know, even have a connecting flight in China because they think they're going to capture him. I'm like, dude, I was going to capture you because first of all, you, you look, you're Asian and you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, if, if like China captures like an Asian Canadian and like Canada looks at it, like, who cares? You're like, this person's Ch- Chinese, right? Uh, uh, and then number two, you're, you're not a big deal. You're not an important person. Like the people they capture are all like, you know, like, like they're all diplomats or big time, you know, entrepreneurs. You're nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not a big important, deal. But- important people that, that can definitely have some change in the world. Well, yeah, he, he probably can't do much. Yeah, or you he have can, no influence. But yeah. He doesn't have that. But, exactly. but, but I'm wondering, but like when I asked him about it, like, why are you so freaked out about it? He's like, no, they're going to come get me. They're going to come get me. And he's so smart, right? He's a, like a highly intelligent INTP. He works for mm-hmm. Amazon and makes $140,000 a year. And like n- nothing really freaks him out except for this one thing. Like China's going to get me. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you know, like of all the things he's fearing, it's like this big organization is going to come get, get him. You know. Well, well, I I understand his fear. I I can see where the fear is coming from. Like cl- quite clearly, I I can see it because yeah, it would be frightening. But as you say, I it would be like it's not really that realistic because you're not that big of a guy, and you know you can move around it. But yeah, I will I will probably also have a little bit of fear in me if that was me. Uh, but I don't I I don't know. I just. In that, I'm pretty relaxed. It's more, the, the thing that will make me really afraid is like, what are my parents going to say about this if the police arrest me? They're going to hate me if they arrest me. That is the thing. If I got arrested, I would be like, I don't care. I can get out sometimes or whatever. I'm going to figure this out. Everything is going to be fine. But if my parents back home are going to get really mad at me because I did some stupid shit, that is the worst. Not getting arrested. Yeah. That is the fun thing. Not getting tortured, not getting arrested. I can deal with that, but I can't deal with my parents back home 
being really angry at me. That is the more worst thing. You know what? L- 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 like, I-, I have a theory then. Uh, you know, I-, I know you don't like theories, but like, I'm going to give you a theory. Oh, it's cool. It's cool. I, uh, I enjoy them as a hobby, I will say. A hobby. When, it okay. realist, when it gets real, no, I don't want the theory. I want the facts piece, but you know, as a hobby, as just everyday. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, this, this, this is why, what I think. So I have an ENFJ friend and he has masculine FE. Uh-huh. And for him, he really cares about the opinion of those that is close to him. He doesn't give a shit about anyone else outside of that like close circle. But the people within that close circle, their opinion is highly valued. So the fact that you really give a shit about what your parents think of you, I feel like that's a masculine FE thing. You know, it, and the fact it, that you don't care about the, what the big organization thinks of you is it's also a reflection of that, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's no. people I respect and then that's people that don't respect. Not in that sense, I would say, fuck you and talk bad to them. I always talk polite to people. But there are some people where if they give me an opinion, I will listen to them. I will say, okay, I respect you because I know you know some shit or you have another perspective that is good to have. So I will definitely, I respect uh, your voice, but there's other people, or most people I'm like, I don't really care what you have to say. What do you even know? Like, but, but yeah, I, my parents is probably one of them. I also have other friends, but it's not like, there are not a lot of people where I have that, you know, I respect their voices. So you have, you have a few people. people. Huh? Uh, you, so you have a few people where you absolutely respect them and you don't want to yeah. break that trust, you know? Mm, um, yeah. I think it's also because you have feminine introvert thinking. So you don't take yourself so seriously as like, you know, uh, an IP with masculine, you know, you know, um, yeah, you're yeah, thinking yeah. or you're feeling, you know, you know, so you're, you're a little bit more flexible in that sense. And you, you know, like, yeah, you know, you know where you are kind of, and you know, you know, no big organization is going to come get you because you're not like, you know, you're not like a CEO or anything, you know? Like, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but I want to move on from fear to pain now. So I, I noticed something very interesting um, with double observers. So I wanted to share this with you and see kind of like if you relate to this or if, if this is something that you deal with. So mm. um, I really like working out. Like I actually, my day job, I work as a fitness instructor. So I teach, mm. like, I'm a personal trainer essentially, but I teach group fitness also. And I've always liked weights. And whenever I lift weights and I feel that, that pain, like from the, the soreness from lifting weights, I actually like it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. Like I actually like, there's, it's almost like sadistic. I, I kind of like the pain, you know? Mm. Um, then I noticed that I had some friends who are double observers and they like, when they're sore, they absolutely go ballistic. Like it, like they can't handle the pain, of like the soreness from lifting weights or, or whatnot. Like I just find that the people who are more double observers seems to have, you know, like kind of like what you said, you know, you guys have more trouble with pain, right? So it's more physical pain in this in this in this case, and perhaps this person has masculine introvert sensing, you know, and mm. maybe, maybe that means you're more, maybe you're more you're more weak to pain. I don't know, uh, because you feel it more. I don't, that's just an assumption I'm making. I, I'm not really sure, but uh, mm-hmm. can you can you can you give me your your take on this? So can you give me like your take on emotional pain and also physical pain? Like how how do you view it and like how do you how do you feel about it? Like you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm on. Okay, there's two things about it. There's the physical pain. The first thing, the first SI fact is I have red hair, so I have the red hair gene in me. And they actually have figured out that um, red hair genes are a little more, like we feel, for some reason, most red haired people feel pain a little uh, more intense. So they can actually, like, if they take the hand on something hot, some fire, they can feel it uh, before uh, other people can feel it. It's just, the, yeah. That's something there, um, and they have to have a little more like uh, if they have to get sleepy with some drugs, they uh, they also have to use a little more because they need some more drugs than other people. Not all redheads people, but that's just a tendency, and I think that is the same with me. Like with physical pains, like I can feel it more intensely, but but I can also like hold the control of it. I also think that is my sleep, my place, like really focus because when I'm going into a thought, I can't actually feel anything on my body at all it's just my own brain going on um so so when i'm doing that i'm my physical body won't feel anything at all it's really crazy sometimes to see like when i go to sleep mode uh i have been to some few street battles and when i got hit i uh, i couldn't feel anything like i know it hurt my body but i couldn't feel 
anything. It was just emptiness, no silence, no anything. And I know I wasn't blacked out or anything. I just couldn't feel anything. So um, that's maybe also my body just trying to, you know, save myself with sending some chemicals into my body to, you know, make it more relaxed. But still, the other thing is the more emotional pain. I feel that really raw. The physical pain, I react more intense to it, but I can also hold on to it more and 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 be in the pain in, in the longer one than I think the most people I have been with where we have done stupid shit with, with painful things. Um, I can see there that I can hold it longer, but I will also like scream more in a sense. So it at first it looked like I can't take anything, but then in the long run, I can see like, I can actually take a lot. It's just, I'm just acting more out, I guess. I think that is masculine if I don't know. The other thing is with emotional pain is that 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 is a bigger problem. I don't really care that much. It's never fun to be hurt. It's never fun to get a knife cut or you know falling down the stairs and breaking a leg. It's never fun. But but the emotional pain, the pain when 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 if you got a girlfriend and she breaks up with you or if somebody call you call you out and say you're a stupid prick or anything like that and really hating on you, that is. 10 times worse than actually getting hit by something i think for me at least personally um but yeah why why do you think that hurts 10 times more the emotional pain like what why do you think it hurts it hurts you the most compared to the other stuff the thing is i can't really you know change it in that sense because it's internal i can it's funny when when i can feel like iffy pain feelings pain i can actually feel it in my body yeah. Um, my adrenaline will go crazy yeah and and i can feel it in, inside way more intensely and it's just more unpleasant i don't know why i just think it's because it comes inside you know and it's not really a physical pain it's not really something that i can explain maybe that's also demon any because i can't factually explain why i have this it shouldn't it isn't logical I shouldn't have this, so so I won't allow this pain. That could yeah. also be, but but uh, but yeah, I think maybe I honestly don't know. I have been thinking about this, but I honestly have no clue. No know. freaking clue. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, I have been thinking about that why and 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 trying to check up on some things. Um, but that's no really clear. Like this is it, or this is could be it. There's a lot of funny enough any path that that could go so yeah. well l- let me let me let me ask you then um what are some things that people can trigger you on you know like there's everyone has something like like when you know for example for me i'm an ep right so i'm afraid of being locked in you know like the thought of commitment like long-term commitment is like probably one of the biggest fear because i feel like i lose my freedom to do the stuff that i like so that would be like kind of like a trigger point for me where i would like someone would trigger me right but like, what about you? What, what what is something that would trigger you? Because you said that you don't understand why you have this huge, you know, 10 times the effect from emotional pain. But you, you don't get the 10 times effect from emotional pain unless someone triggers you. There's, so there's something specific. Like, like you have a hot button. Like when people press this red button in you, you freak the fuck mm-hmm. out. So like, do you know what that red button is in you? On most things, yes, because I've had experienced a lot of things with that. But yeah. mostly... A lot of the things, yes, but there, there, yeah, I know there are some some things where I I have no clue on what the red button is. But I also think that is a build up, you know. That uh, normally that isn't a red button, but when there's a lot of shit happening that have been built up, then it becomes a red button. But I know like the terms uh, ginger, I ain't really uh, happy with that. So when people yeah. uh, racist people call me that. Um, it it gets the anger out. Uh, racist people normally also get the angers out. Um, why why do you get angry when you're called a ginger? Be, because in here in Denmark, like it's, I don't know how it. Is. I know the English, the British, they also like really hating on in on the redheads like extremely. Uh, but here in Denmark also because they see, I, I have trying to study the why they have this hate against gingers because I know. A lot of people just automatically, like here in Denmark, they're like, if this person is ginger, we automatically all have the right to make fun of him. And it's funny. It's a really weird pattern I have been seeing. I, I think it's historical uh, in IDNA because we, we wasn't really happy with the, 
with the Celts uh, back then and the Iris, some conflicts. But it's still weird because a lot of uh, the Vikings was also redhead. Uh, but I think it's something that caught up with, with Christianity when, when that grew in Denmark. They, um, they kind of, because, you know, red was demon. And they actually have some scriptures around where, you know, with, if you have red hair, you was a witch or you was a wizard and then you will get burned, you know, back then. And, and I think, like... That's just stuck with a lot of people here in Scandinavia, and in, it's just stuck in their brain. Like redheads, yes, we hate them because, and then it's just because we know today that, oh, maybe they are real. I really hope so, but but mostly is accept the fact that wizards and witches doesn't exist. I well, hope they do, but whatever. Well, you know, thanks to Harry Potter, wizards are cool now, right? So yeah, exactly, exactly. That's not okay, but. Uh, but that thing, that thing will give me trigger. Another thing that also will give me trigger that is um, love. I freaking hate love. Like heavy love, uh, sharing love, getting love. I can do it with close friends, friends I trust. But like I don't really have a lot, a lot of feelings in me in that you know all the days. So, uh, so so it like uh, how to explain this? Like I don't know how to share them perfectly and I don't know how to get them either like the feelings from the outside so it's really weird when they, they try to give me love and when I'm finally accepting their love and if they're leaving me or hitting me or shitting on me that will also trigger my my, my nerves and my anger when when they're actually leaving me because now I accept the, the love now I accept the feeling and kind of, you know, live in it. And then it just, you know, shit on them, moved on. And that would give me, give so, me. So you're, you fear being abandoned then. That's like one of your. Yeah. Being alone, being alone. It's really I crazy. See. I heard Elon, Elon Musk uh, talking about like, he promised himself that he would never be alone. And the most crazy part of it that was um, back then, uh, I moved to another school because of bullying uh, to start a new life. And I said the exact, exact same thing just in danish um and that is the thing you know the fear of being lonely the feeling of of never finding a, a tribe never fitting in anywhere and having that struggle um so yeah uh, man dude that's so fascinating because uh i think this is something i take for granted is that you know i make friends really easily so i i just mm. never really saw it from a point of view of you know uh, somebody who um, is you know supposed to be self above tribe, but actually deep down inside you really like having a tribe. Like to you, it's really yeah, important. Yeah, I I love people. Like I really do, and I really care for people. I really want everybody to be happy and have a good time together, and you know just have have fun. But I'm awkward. I'm weird, and and I really struggle to like fit in with people. Uh, of course, I'm better at it now, but but still, it's still a struggle. Um, so so. It's funny, I have had a lot of girlfriends in my life, but, but, but it's still a struggle for me to get one. It's still a struggle for me to get new friends. Um, so, so, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, man. No, no dude, that's, 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 uh, that's really good stuff. I think you're pretty developed for your, for your age, actually. Like, <laughs> like you're, you're only 18 and you're working your fourth function already. Like when I was 18, man, I was only using my first two functions, you know, like, I, I think, uh, you know, like, so I think that's, that's really good. Um, we're going to we'll wrap this up pretty soon, but I do have uh, one more thing that I'd like to, um, try to ask you is yeah. that if, if you know someone, another INTP out there who is struggling with FE and mm. knowing what you know now, because uh, you've gotten a chance to practice it. You've built a little tribe now and you're hoping to build it bigger uh, as time mm -hmm. goes by. What kind of advice would you give them to kind of like practice using FE that worked for you? Like this worked for you and you think it might work for them too. Um, yeah, the thing is, um, I have two blasters advice actually. The okay. first thing is I, I have seen this in uh, Mr. Rogers, uh, the, the weird guy with the neighborhood. I started him uh, and he is really close to me. Uh, I'm more mas masculine and extroverted than him, but we're still pretty close. And I figured out that he had this struggle. I figured out Eminem, who's also pretty close to me in a way, had the same thing like share, figuring out one's self emotion is hard. So the first thing I will give is 
try try to find a thing, a hobby, whatever. It could be it could be a rapper, it could be a songwriter, it could be music, it could be film, it could be drawing, it could be what the fuck ever. Just find something that you can escape with because no, it's not good to hide your emotion away, but just find a way to like not express it to uh, express it to other people, but just express it to the product. And you know, try to get it on the product. Try to get the the emotion out with with a song or with a story. Um, that had helped me a lot, and I know this will help because I saw Mr. Rogers do this. I have seen Eminem doing this. Uh, I have even seen um, a lot of other INTP and ITP. I can't remember them all, but but yeah, doing this. So I know this one will help. I I can't say what you should do, like what hobby. It's up to yourself because we have different interests, but it's a good thing. The The other thing is, like, I know it's hard at first and you're going to fail at it miserably at first, but go out and do the fucking Jesus. Read the fucking Bible where Jesus is in it and see what the fuck are you doing. I'm not a religious person and you can believe in it or you you, you can leave it alone, but just study what is he doing. He He's basically like the EJ killing himself for the tribe with, with, um, with helping other people and try to, to make them, their life better and killing himself in the process. Not necessarily killing yourself because that is also an imbalance. Don't do that. But try to give people something. Try to see because you have the two uh, observers in the middle so you can, you can see a lot more than them. You are actually more clever than them. So you can, you can see a lot more than in them than them um so so you know go out watch their feet go out and try to uh, because you can't help yourself get a girlfriend but i promise you you can help others to get a girlfriend you can help others to uh, to uh, make their business better make their hobby better or train them or train with them and and just you know yeah build them up make them happy and slowly, slowly, just don't have any intentions. You, you, you want to have this as girlfriend or you want to have this as a best friend. Just relax, keep calm and just go out and help them. Um, and slowly build a tribe and just, you know, don't get too attached to some people. Just let them fly away and let them come back again and just go out and meet people. Get a good, really good spectrum of a lot of people out there in the world because the more people you know out there in the world, when you are in trouble, you uh, you're not alone, and then I think that is the biggest thing when I piece because we want to do everything on our own, and we're pretty good at it. We're pretty we're pretty clever, so we can do this. But at one point, we need people to help us. And if you don't have a tribe, you don't have people out there to help you, it's gonna fall apart. So, and I learned that the hard way. You need you need a you need a lot of people uh, out there to to help you build you up because now you have saved them. Now it's their turn to save you, and of course, fifty of them. They're going to leave you. They're going to give you the fuck finger. But the other half, they will help you. They will. Not everybody is jerks. So, yeah, that is my two plaster, <laughs> sleep plaster advice I have figured out the past many years. Cool, dude. And then do you have any final message that you uh, want to add on that we didn't touch on today in this uh, conversation? Yeah. Whatever you do, if you are an MP, don't smoke weed on a broadcast or don't smoke weed on this. Don't just don't do that. That's no, no, that's never a good thing. Do it home privately, but never publicly. That's the only advice I have. Gotcha. You know, it's actually it's actually legal in Canada to uh, smoke weed now. You know. Oh, it is. Yeah, you can oh. just, you can just buy it in the in the store now. You know, kind of like you know, you buy cigarettes and stuff. <laughs> I want to live in Canada now. That's yeah, sad. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty good here. <laughs> All right, dude. Th- thanks again for doing this. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep in touch. And uh, thanks for sharing everything. You know, I really like the fact that you were really, you went really deep. And, you know, you talked about the stuff that, you know, you, you were afraid of. I, I think that the fact that you went to the dark side, I think that's really going to help a lot of people. Because a lot of people are scared to, like, go deep into the dark side. And I think people just want to go to happy land, right? So the fact that yeah, you went to the dark yeah. side, that's, that's like, the, the most helpful thing I think anyone can ever do. So thanks for that, dude. Always. And thanks for being here. It was uh, fun to try to, exp- yeah, it, it was fun to blast. Definitely. Yeah. Fun <laughs> to do that. Always fun. All right, dude. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.